cow right here is actually quite aggressive. He actually almost poked one of the, one of the guys. He thought he's gonna steal their garbage. But yeah, this is how uh, street life looks here in Gabo. So although they're Muslim guys here, they do believe in some spirits. Uh, this house right here, everyone that lived here, uh, after a while they died, so they consider it as the devil's house. So they're building a new one uh, right there for the people to, to move out. So uh, yeah. By far the worst road so far here in Bissau. We have to go on the side of the road. I mean, there's no point going there. Too, too many potholes. Yeah, two more hours like this. Man, I'm not sure exactly if we're gonna have uh, if we're gonna have room. People are here with sheep, bags. Man. Always jiggy jiggy. That's why he's lazy. croissant especially you definitely have to go in the morning just so you can uh, you know give that good morning vibe uh, uh, a boost so uh, yeah this is located right on the main road our hotel is somewhere right there you can see it from this tree right near the presidential palace but yeah so today we have uh, five hours or so on the road we're gonna have some dances at the one community that I talked to uh, in the previous day, so uh, that's pretty much all that will be on the program, just road and some festivities. If there's anything else, you'll see along the way, but another day here in Western Africa, so let's get things started. Let me take you back to a time when love was as precious as diamonds, where if you search you would find it. By far the worst road so far here in Bissau. We have to go on the side of the road. I mean, there's no point going there. Too, too many potholes. Yeah, two more hours like this. And after four, four and a half hours on the road, we made it to the village of Tabato. Let me turn the camera around so I can show you the village. This is their uh, instrument hall, let's call it that way. People are still uh, getting ready. So yeah, we're gonna have some music, some dancing and so on. Uh, the bad thing about this is you cannot find the city on uh, the village on the map on Google. So we had to wait for someone outside the Batafa and he had to come with us. And then he took us to the village, which is around 20 minutes or so from uh, Batafa. <laughs> They're getting the instruments, the carpet ready. Yeah, so this uh, village is known for uh, instruments, for artists and so on. So we decided to make a little stop along the way to Gabo in order to witness, you know, what, they, uh, what they're good at, what their talent is all about. So uh, yeah, let's see here in a few minutes. Nylon, nylon, yeah, nylon. Yes, yes, yes. This is calabas, the fruit. And this is cow skin. Very, very cool instrument with 21 strings. Yeah, petit coraisi. Yeah, so some people here speak French, some of them uh, speak only Portuguese. So at times we just understand uh, each other by smiles and a little bit of uh, Francais. Oh, 
Oh yeah, things are starting to get lit. Okay, so this is the Mandinga people and these are the Giriots, the people that do these type of celebrations. Every community has a Giriot, but uh, you know, uh, they uh, kind of differentiate themselves between uh, other uh, communities, the type of instruments that they play and so on. So Isaac, you can touch, you can see where they display the big uh, drums, where we call it, you know, in a my friend told us that all the instruments they're handmade in this village and using the raw materials that they collect so uh, yeah it should be fun <laughs> So the next performance is something they've done for the elders of the village back in the day. Let's see how this one goes.
before the break, before they're gonna start the next song. So uh, yeah, this is pretty much how it's gonna be. That was it guys uh, from the festivities here. I want to thank everyone for you know inviting us and actually putting this performance. So, obrigado one more time. Okay, merci, thank you. Thank you very merci much. beaucoup. Oui, oui. The Grip Show. Tabatou. 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 Tabat
Yes. Thank you, everyone. Merci beaucoup. Obrigado. So we asked them how many people actually live in this village. There are a lot of people from this village that actually went to work in Brazil, guys, from what I'm aware of. But uh, let's see what the elder of the village says. That's okay. 389 people. 389, very precise. With the people that left to work or just with everybody? Okay, how many? Okay. Let's take a quick glance at the village here. Hello, thank you, obrigado. Again, not even 400 people that live here. It's a very, very small community. We could not find it on Google Maps. So the guy, like I said, had to wait at the entrance of the city. The gardens of the village are right here. Very, very small, like I said. I mean, for 400 people. How many How many uh, people live in one one house, like one family? So sometimes, like, some other compound is 20 people, some other compound 15, some okay. other compound 8. So each house, each compound has around 20 people, 15, 25, something yeah, exactly. like that. Yeah. So you have the 400 people, yeah, yeah. around 20 compounds. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. That is the mosque of the village. Everyone here is a Muslim, actually. So although they're Muslim guys here, they do believe in some spirits. Uh, this house right here, everyone that lived here, uh, after a while they died, so they consider it as the devil's house. So they're building a new one uh, right there for the people to, to move out. So uh, yeah, interesting story. Yeah, let's walk a little bit more in the village. Very, very simple. Hey! Some cows, some sheep, and so on. Not the big sheep that we have seen uh, in Senegal. And of course, the almighty trees here that we have in Western Africa. How beautiful is this cow right here. Yeah, people are just uh, going back to their houses. Some of them are cleaning the clothes right here. Of course, Danny, our friend, he's pumping, he's pumping some water. <laughs> Yeah, very chill community, guys. Uh, I mean, we did have some, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth communication uh, with someone that actually left uh, to Brazil, and then uh, one of my contacts in Gambia had to uh, had to discuss with them uh, in order to arrange the festivities for us to welcome us in their village. <laughs> Some of the other instruments that they have here. Yeah. yeah, they have them for sale as well. Like I said, they make it for people to to buy as souvenirs, you know, as supporting the community. And we didn't even leave the village, and we stopped at uh, this termite mound, and it has a beautiful tree in the back as well. Check this out. Very very cool. A quick stop for the first drink today guys besides the hot water that we had in the car you know this is the first cold drink that we bought this scorching is 36 Celsius in this village with a few houses I mean the roads guys the roads have been awful so far out of all the places in West Africa this has been the worst uh, Cote d'Ivoire Ghana uh, you know, Gambia Senegal and so on Bissau had you know awful we did two hours, uh, bare, not even a hundred kilometers. So yeah, that just explains how bad it is. Barely any trucks, barely any cars. But yeah, there's a reason for that, but there's no other way. There's no other way. And of course, every time we stop, people try to sell us tomatoes, bananas, chickens, even chickens, guys. I mean, uh, yeah, this is the survival of the fittest. And guys, finally made it to Gabu here in Guinea Bissau. First thing first, had to change clothes because it's really, really hot here, guys. Uh, the hotel, luckily enough, they have plenty of room, so no worries whatsoever. But let me show you how the city looks like, the town of Gabu. Some colonial look-alike houses made out of wood. Some of them have concrete. I'm gonna go and uh, have a beer or have something cold because the uh, things are... Uh, Scorching here in central Guinea-Bissau So what are we doing in Gabu, Guinea-Bissau? Well, 
it's just a stopping point for our trip heading towards uh, Guinea Conakry that is uh, there's no other way you got to stop here because uh, the borders close at a certain specific time you have no time to pass so uh, just to making a quick stop here is probably the best uh, best time overall there's nothing guys there's no monuments there's nothing uh, here to see just some markets and people living here as you can tell everyone's trying to sell something they'll tell you no photo no photo here and there you say okay excuse me then you proceed so this is pretty much how central africa is sorry this is how the western africa is you know a lot of things don't have any touristic attraction again it's about the journey it's about being able to do something not about visiting a specific uh, place it's about uh, pushing through logistics you know uh, timing the heat cars roads everything guys it's, uh, it's a challenge so that's uh, you know that's the whole premises of this uh, journey so just walking the streets guys uh, observing the wildlife here the people you know chatting with a few locals here and there getting some bread buying some drink you know this cow right here is actually quite aggressive it actually almost poked one of uh, one of the guys he thought he's gonna steal their garbage but yeah this is how uh, street life looks here in Gabo whole bunch of donkeys here which way left right left right he doesn't know So guys, putting an end to the video for today on the streets of Gabu. Let me show you a little bit the nightlife. Well, it's actually completely, completely dead. One of the main streets here that you have seen earlier as well. There's not much to do here, guys. It's just a typical rural town in West Africa. Nobody. I mean, there's nobody here. So yeah, without any further delay, I'm going to put an end to the video and I'll see you tomorrow on the road heading towards Lape in Guinea. We're going to have a border crossing. We're going to be just on the road. So most likely tomorrow's footage will be combined with some other footage. So gratitude should be the only attitude. Stay humble and I'll see you next time. Peace out.